There are a couple of Linux commands that could help you erase your digital footprint, so stay to the end of the video to find out how. What's up guys, it's Adolf Skidler yet again with another video about computers and what you should not do in school with them. And in today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about anti-forensics. And now to understand a little bit of what anti-forensics actually is, you need to know about what computer forensics are. You see, computer forensics is a branch of digital computer science. The goal of computer forensics is to actually analyze, examine, preserve, and recover any type of digital information. So some of the commands we're going to be talking about could actually help you stay a little bit more anonymous and help erase some of your digital footprint that you might not even know that you created. But now that I explained what computer forensics is and you got a little bit of a gist of how that works, let's get into the real meat and potatoes of this video, which is anti-forensics. So to start, anti-forensics, or quite literally the opposite of computer forensics, refers to the techniques and methods used to hinder or prevent actual digital forensics from happening. These techniques are employed by individuals or groups who wish to hide their activities or cover their tracks and avoid detection. Now as a little disclaimer, I do want to say don't use any of this for nefarious purposes, alright? This video is entirely for educational purposes only. But anti-forensics can actually be used in different areas like computer systems, networks, or things like digital media. Now, there are a couple of different types of anti-forensics to talk about. The first one is data encryption, or using an algorithm to encrypt your data. This can make it difficult for forensic investigators to actually read the data because it is encrypted. For number two, we have data deletion, or the actual deletion of the data that you are trying to hide or, you know, mask. Properly deleting data can be challenging to recover, especially if tools like file shredders or disk wiping utilities are employed while you're actually deleting your files. This can make it really hard for the forensics team to actually reconstruct your data, and it'll make you a little bit safer. The third type of anti-forensic is actually steganography. Steganography is the art of hiding information within other files or media, and most of the time, forensic investigators would struggle to identify or extract the hidden information with steganography. Anti-forensic type number four is file fragmentation. Fragmenting files across a disk or a RAID array can make it difficult to recover the complete file, you know, because it's broken up into pieces, right? It's like the Triforce shards in the Wind Waker. You gotta go find all those things across the entire map, dude. Who wants to do that? Uh, apparently forensic analysts. <laughs> but no, file fragmentation is a great way to actually mix up the files that you have, and it'll make it harder for a forensic investigator to actually read your files or recover them. Anti-forensic number five, or anti-memory, involves extracting information from a computer's volatile memory, aka the RAM, right? So RAM is always a volatile memory, meaning it's changing. You know how people say, uh, Bitcoin is too volatile, I won't store my money in there. That's basically basically because volatile means, you know, it goes up and down a lot. It changes all the time. So anti-memory forensics actually obfuscate or remove traces of activities from RAM to hinder investigations. So clearing your RAM could actually make you a little bit more anonymous online. The next type of anti-forensic is actually time manipulation, and it's the last type that we're going to be talking about. With time manipulation, the person trying to stay anonymous would be altering the time settings or manipulating timestamps of files so that it can make it difficult for a person to actually pinpoint point down when exactly the file was created or edited. So now that you know about the six methods of anti-forensics that you could actually apply to make yourself a little bit more anonymous online, let's talk about some of the Linux commands that could actually erase some of your steps that you might not know you actually made. So think about this, right? Every time you enter a command into a terminal or a console, you could just hit the up arrow key on your keyboard and it remembers that command, right? Right? We gotta think about this, where does it store that command? This command is actually stored in a feature called bash history. Bash history is a feature that allows you to view and access previously executed commands in the shell. It keeps a record of the commands that you entered along with the date and time of execution. So if you want to hide the activity that you're doing on Linux, you have to clear this history file, right? If some somebody gets a hold of this bash history file, it's over. You're done. You're screwed, dude. You might as well be the Queen of England. You're dead, alright? So let's start with viewing the bash history. Now, if you're using an SSH client like MobaXterm, the bash history is actually viewable through the FTP side of things. Normally, this bash history file is actually hidden, and you have to enter a command called history to actually view it. You can also access an extended version of the bash history by typing more bash history, just like you see in the slide below. Now, some of the ways to clear this bash history is to 
disable the history altogether by exporting the hist size or the history size to zero. You could ignore the history by typing hist ignore and entering commands that you want to be automatically excluded from the history that it saves. You can clear the history and write it to the disk and you could also shred the history. Now the shred command is really special because it actually passes over the bash history with a bunch of random data however many times you want it to. So that way it just completely garbles it and makes it look like, I don't know, fucking Chinese dude. To start off, in order to disable the bash history, we're actually going to type export his size equals zero. The his size variable determines the maximum number of commands that will be saved in the command history. By setting it to zero, you're effectively telling it to save nothing, right? Zero commands, right? Save nothing. Zero bitches. The important thing to remember about uh, his size zero is that it's limited to the current shell session, right? So it's not going to disable the bash history for every session that's logged in. It's actually only going to be the session that you are currently logged into. Now for the ignore history command, it's basically sort of the same principle, right? So you type hist ignore and then whatever command you want it to automatically exclude from the history. So anything with like ls if you're navigating the file system or cd for changing the directory, you know, those commands will automatically just be excluded from your bash history. This is useful if you want to keep your history but want to clean it up a little bit. Now for clearing and shredding the history, we're going to learn about two commands. The first one is history dash c. Now the dash c clears the history, obviously, and it removes the history list for the current session that it is currently signed into. This does not delete the file itself, right? So somebody can still pull your history even if you clear it. It doesn't delete or modify the files on the disk at all, just the current session that you're logged into. Now a way to combat this is by using the shred command. This command uses the shred utility and it securely deletes the contents of the bash history file. The shred command will overwrite whatever file you want multiple times. This makes it extremely difficult or even impossible for an analyst or a forensic analyst to actually recover the bash history. As you can see in this command, tack n specifies the number of times to rotate over the file. So however many times you want it to write over, right? If we have tack n5, it'll write over the file five different times. Tack z adds a final overwrite to all zeros, right? So it'll just on disk level, it'll encrypt it, it'll overwrite it to all zeros, basically wiping the file completely out of existence. And tack u truncates and removes the file after it shreds. So even after it's done shredding, if you add tack u to this command, it'll just completely remove it. This option ensures that the file cannot be recovered at all. So now that you have the knowledge to actually completely remove the history of your Linux terminal or console, you know, terminal, console, whatever, you can actually automate this to happen every single day if you really wanted it to. Now you can automate this with something called cron jobs. The cron utility is used for running scripts and commands at regular intervals and also at specific times and dates. It's built into most Linux distributions and provides a very useful way to schedule your tasks on the server. So you can schedule a shredding of your bash history by doing this command right here. The shred dash bash history part actually just shreds the history. And if you're wondering what cat dev null does, it actually replaces the file with an empty one. The cron job part is part of this one star 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 thing here before all of that on the commands. This is telling it to run on the first hour of every single day until the end of time. So effectively your bash history will be cleared on the first hour of every day. Well guys, that basically sums up the anti-forensics video. If you like what you saw in this video, if you learned a little bit of something, make sure you go check out the course VSEC. You see, VSEC is a course that me and my friends created over at Veracity.org. And basically what this course offers is it's offering you all kinds of skills that they're not going to teach you in school, alright? Trust me, school is not going to teach you how to make sure your bash history is cleared, okay? They're not going to teach you how to be anonymous. They're not going to teach you anything relevant about cyber attacks, really. You're going to have to learn that over at VSEC. By signing up to VSEC, you will gain knowledge about networking and security, computer hardware, how to stay anonymous. You'll be analyzing and playing with malware strains for known botnets and, you know, rats and stuff like that. By signing up, you'll be able to build and deploy your own website on your own Apache web server. You'll get access to 65 different tools. Tools for networking, information gathering, all sorts of different stuff. And a 24-7 support team at your service, right? So you could ask me or any of the other professors in the course any sort of cybersecurity question that you might have. Have.
have. And we will answer you guys as fast as possible. So guys, without further ado, if you like what you saw, make sure you go check out vsec at veracity.org. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Every single one of you has a purpose and mission to fulfill on my fulcrum shit, right? Don't let anybody steer you from your path that you're trying to fulfill on this earth. You can literally do anything, all right? On some fulcrum motivational Yodi land shit, right? You can literally do anything. You want to be a YouTuber? Go be a YouTuber, dude. You want to be a hacker? Come to vsec and learn. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you like what you saw, drop a like and subscribe. My name is Varexity, and I will be seeing you in the next video with some more of that juicy, meaty, uh, delicious computer knowledge, alright? <laughs> Peace out, guys.